Hello everyone, Trophy100, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a review of the 2010 Chateau Kerouac. And as my viewers and subscribers know, Margot is one of my areas of interest this year. And I've done a primer on Margot basics, which I will put at the end of this video. Chateau Kerouac is one of 14 third growth wines in the Bordeaux left bank. And if you want to know more knowledge about what is a growth wine, I have videos on that, which maybe I'll try and put at the end of this video also. History of Chateau Carwan is starts in about 1710 when the vineyard was bought by Sir John Collingwood. And then his daughter married Mark Carwan and she changed her name. And also the winery was named after him. He must have been British or American because it's one of the few properties that through history we know that Thomas Jefferson visited um, during his wine trips to Bordeaux. So Mark Kerwan passed away in 1815 and then the estate was passed to a person called Camille uh, Goudard who was the future mayor of Bordeaux. And he decided, his, or his family decided to gift the winery to the city of Bordeaux. But the city of Bordeaux really didn't want to run it. So in 1902, they signed an agreement with a negotiant company called Schuyler and Schroeder, which is um, actually the owner of the vineyard today, to um, manage the um, estate. So that happened for a little while. And then in 1907, it was sold to another negotiant, George Gustier. And then it was eventually then sold back to the Schroeder and Schuyler family in 1925, and they've owned it since then. I would say the, the Schroeder and Schuyler family is a large negotiant. Uh, I wouldn't say they are a um, very known synonymous with really, really high-end things like LVMH. Um, but of course, they like any other negotiant or big conglomerate, they have money. Um, I think Kerwan um, has had a history of not underperformance, but not overperformance. Let's put it that way. It's in 1991, Michel Roland was hired as a consultant, but I think he was terminated in 2006 or 2008. And then um, the Shiler family started to manage it again. Um, obviously, um, they're very um, experienced in terms of winemaking and the wine business. So um, they can maintain Chateau Kerouan, but um, I don't think anything really has um, significant has happened on the, vin um, the winery. So one of the things is Chateau Kerouan is basically the same size that it was in the, when it was 1855. And even the house, the chateau, was actually built by Marc Kerouan. So of course it's been renovated, but um, basically the same properties, so the same size. It's about 40 hectares in size and it's planted 45% Cabernet Sauvignon, 30% Merlot, 15% Cabernet Franc, and 10% Petit Verdot. And it looks like they're going to try to put in more Cabernet Sauvignon and decrease the Cabernet Franc. And because of the difficulties in maturing Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot, many times it's not even in the blend, which kind of, in a way, seems wasteful because you've got 25% of your winery that's growing grapes that you're not even using. They also grow a bit of Carmamere, and there is a small amount of that starting with the 2017 vintage in the blend. So again, a lot of these things that we're gonna talk about are um, post this wine. So this is the 2010 vintage. So the terroir of Carwan is gravel, sand, and limestone. Um, they're, they have one of the highest points in Margot, but again, uh, with Margot region, I don't believe the actual um, elevation matters as much as some other regions that we've seen. It's um, more the location, I think, which is a little bit more important and some of the best areas um, you'll see are kind of populated together. Um, they have, on average, vines about 30 years of age, but they do have some vines that are about um, 60 years of age. So 2016 is a significant year for Kerwan because they did a full renovation of their winemaking facilities. And one of the things that I always look at is the number of vats that they have. So they have about 37 
of these. And again, um, that's a substantial amount. But again, I look at that, that's probably a very good, significant improvement. And again, why I think it's important to look at how many VATs they have is because in this situation, they have, um, I think um, that it allows for parcel by parcel vinification, they have actually 46 separate parcels. But if you only have like one VAT, it doesn't matter if you have 46 parcels because it all goes in one place. But with 37 VATs, you could actually uh, separate many of the parcels together. So um, I think that's an improvement and I think you will see an improvement in their wines. Chateau Carouin chooses to um, both do their both their alcoholic and malolactic fermentation in the same vats and the wine is aged 40% um, in new oak barrels between 18 to 20 months. To me, that doesn't seem like a long time. And again, this could be my own um, simple fly knowledge of winemaking. But to me, when you're only using 40% new oak and for 18 to 20 months, perhaps the um, grape um, content or intensity isn't really that high and so maybe that's why you don't use 100% new oak that's why you don't age it for 24 uh, months uh, 20 to 24 months in general the 2010 vintage right now is one of the best um, newer vintages out there I'm not talking about like of course there's 2015 2016 but they're really too young but they're these vintages are coming into um, drinking uh, the window um, 2009 is to me, a better drinking vintage at this point, but long term, I think 2010 is a better vintage in terms of it's got a little bit more complexity, a little bit more tannic structure. Um, 2009, I find a bit warmer in terms of to drink. It's a little bit more cozy at this point, but I think if you go out 20, 30 years and compare vintage to vintage, probably the 2010 will have a little bit more longevity. That's just my personal opinion and based on my drinking experience. Um, in 2010, the blend was 50% Cabernet Sauvignon, 35% Merlot, 9% Cabernet Franc, and 6% Petit Verdot. And 14,500 cases was produced, which is quite a bit of wine. Uh, I believe that like Lafitte produces about 10,000 cases. So um, it's quite a large estate. And in general, my um, impression of Kerwan is always it's Again, never really overperformed too much. You don't get really stunning vintages of Corwan. I don't think you get really, really bad vintages, but I think you could say that um, at most that it has performed at a third growth level and probably in a lot of the vintages between, I guess, 1980, I'm not gonna go back any earlier than that because I'm not familiar with those, but let's say between 1980 and 2000, many of those vintages would um, kind of hover between the 88 and 92 point range. There'd be very few vintages that I would say would be above 95 points in my books. Um, and hopefully that will change because the Margot region is um, having a bit of renaissance. They've had this full renovation in 2016. So I'd give it a couple of years. The winemaking really hasn't changed that much. They really haven't done that much with the vineyard. So um, I'd give it till about 2020 and look at the Kerwan wines after 2020 and hopefully we'll see a bit of a progression. Um, I don't think they're going to get any worse, but again, I don't think this is a, what I would call a winery that I would really look out for in the region. Um, there are other ones that I think have done a little bit more in terms of their um, growth and their expansion than Kerwan. Let's taste the wine. I'll let you know that I've had it open now about two and a half hours. I originally drank it with my friend. We put it in a decanter. The rest I left in the bottle. So this portion that I'm drinking and um, sampling right now has not been decanted, but it's in the bottle about two and a half hours. Um, so it should be well uh, uh, aerated. So on the smell, of course you get dark fruits. There's still a lot of life in this wine. Um, there's a lot of oak, um, like a little toastiness in it, and you smell like the Cabernet Sauvignon grape in this, a um, lot of cassis, some blackberries, blueberries, that type of aroma on this uh, wine. Um, I don't get the characteristic like chocolatey silkiness, not really. Maybe if you try hard, it's a little bit of a dark chocolate, like a bittersweet dark chocolate. Um, 
but you know very nice aroma i would say medium intensity and that would be one of the knocks on this wine that is not as aromatic as i would expect from a 2010 but you know it could be a strong vintage and maybe it needs a little bit more time on the taste dark fruits for sure cassis and black currants blackberries um, there is a bit of sharpness. It's not as smooth as I like. It almost tastes a little bit over oaked, in my opinion. I'm not sure if it's just a young wine, uh, but there is a bit of a bitterness or a sharpness at the end of this. Uh, unusual for 2010 because it is um, kind of a very hot vintage, so it really shouldn't have this type of uh, greenness at the end. So I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, a lot of sweet fruit, but uh, somehow the aftertaste is not quite balanced. It's not smooth. It's a little bit, um, yeah, edgy on the uh, aftertaste. So I'm not sure if just it's young and it needs more time. So I would say it might be young. Uh, let's give it another 10 years uh, and then we'll try it again. Um, yeah, it's an unusual because 2010, is well aged so uh, it is a strong vintage but um, I wouldn't expect this characteristic um, on the aftertaste I would expect much more rounded fruit um, it is it's almost tasted over extracted and almost like a Napa wine in fact it's almost an Americanized wine in my opinion um, so I'm not sure what to think about it um, the wine spectator rates it as 91 points I'm going to give it 89 points, uh, but again, it could be that it's just young, but at this point, uh, I've had other Margot wines in different vintages and even in the 2010 that I think I would prefer over this wine. Uh, it's a good wine, don't, don't get me wrong, but the aftertaste, there is something in the aftertaste that I'm not too thrilled about, and I think it's just, it could be it's just young and it's just not come together yet. Um, so again, I probably want to check it out in around 10 years. Hope you've enjoyed this video review. Until next time, happy drinking.